Welcome back to another episode of The Wally Show. I have a special guest, a fellow wrestling fan. Yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> King yes, Rando, sir. how you doing, sir? I'm doing well, man. You a wrestling fan, too? I am a huge wrestler. I was at WrestleMania, uh, and you was at WrestleMania in Dallas, right? No, nah, I didn't go to WrestleMania. I, I mean, I've been to Hell in a Cell. I went to SummerSlam. Um, uh, I was front row when Brock Lesnar picked Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah. You was okay. Oh, yeah, you was on camera because when I was watching, I said, that's Key Randall. Yep. <laughs> people that don't know who you are. Bro, they was wrestling right in front of me. It was yeah, so Yeah, I man. saw it, and you was on there. And then it was a promotional picture that yep. you was on as well. Yeah, me and Austin Theory, yep. Yes, with Austin Theory. So you have you have your own all-boys, Expo Boys boarding school. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. I have my own school. Um, I started it uh, last year. The school opened last year in August. Uh, well, August 2022. And uh, right now, um, we're opening our after school program back up. Our after school program has been running for about four years. Um, but our school teaches, you know, the different skill trades, how to work on cars, houses, um, you know, like changing oil, changing brakes, uh, you name it. Uh, we've been doing many different things with our school. I mean, we're very proud of what we're doing, but I'm sure we'll get d uh, deeper into it with more questions. So. And I see that you remodeled the the house that you purchased for the school. Yeah, uh, that was my boyhood home. Um, we, we were able to get it back and uh, we turned it into a, a, a safe haven for our boys because like we didn't want it to seem like so institutional uh, for the students, like just staying on campus. So we have them their own actual home with a kitchen and their own rooms and all that stuff like that. So it's nine beds and three baths, you know, and it's, it's just beautiful, man. Um, I, I was I'm glad we were able to do that for our students, you know, and our donors just, you know, help us out so much um, because we are free of tuition. Uh, so we, there is a such thing as a boarding school with free tuition and I'm one. Um, so, uh, and we don't take any government funding, no grants or anything. We just simply do what our, you know, supporters help us do. And we're able to continue running our school. Because how I found about you, you was on Roland Martin. <laughs> yes, sir. And you was on Roland Bard. You said, listen, I'm not about I'm not just about voting the government. I'm about doing for self. Right. And Brother Roland was like the government. He was trying to force his idea on your idea. But I understood where you were coming from. Right. Because I believe in the teaching of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad about do mm -hmm. for self. And so Correct. that's what you were talking about. Mm hmm. Absolutely. Doing for self is how we're going to get things done. Yes, we can vote. Yes, voting is important. It's like I was telling him, I'm like, but I'm not trying to make it seem as if voting is the be all end all for our community. That's that's exactly what I was trying to tell him. I'm like, that's not, you know, where we're going to best fit if we can go do things for ourselves. And we have the power to do these things for ourselves. You just have to want to do it. And you are a Republican or conservative. Yeah, I consider myself conservative, not um, not uh, any political affiliation because you got conservative Democrats, you know. So uh, it just okay. yeah, I, I line there because that's like kind of what our granddad taught us growing up. And it's simple stuff, you know, Christianity, you know, believing in a man, and a woman, you know, um, all that stuff, you know, the nuclear family, et cetera. So just just that simple stuff. I know when people hear conservative, they immediately think Republican. But I'm just like, you got conservative Democrats, conservative Republicans, conservative libertarians, you know. So uh, it's, it's that's just kind of uh, what that is. And it also, because you've been moving around, you know, Candace Owens did a documentary exposing the mistreatment uh, of the Black Lives Matter, how they've been taking the donations and spending it on themselves. Yep. And you was at the at the event. Yep. I was at the premiere. Yes, sir. You were at the premiere. And I was like, wow. Yep. So you are a fan of Candace Owens. 
yeah, Candace and I, uh, we definitely had contact and uh, she she appreciates what I'm doing. Um, you know, we were able to connect through Kanye, actually. Um, Kanye actually gave her my information um, once we, he and I had met and that's how we got connected. But uh, yes, yeah, she definitely supports what we're doing. And I support her also. I'm, I'm, I'm supportive of Blexit. They support what I do. So absolutely. So when I saw that piece and I see you there, a lot of people were saying that he shouldn't be there. This is Candace Owens. But your idea of you're you're you you're about educating your kids and Correct. and you working with whoever worked with you. Exactly. And I also saw that you and Rolling got in a tip for tat with the whole thing when you took your the 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 boys to go see the governor of mm -hmm. Georgia to go meet with him. Rolling right. was he was just throwing shots and shade. What is his plan? What is his plan? You say you will meet if the opportunity presents itself, if Stacey Abrams want to meet. So what made you, what did he promise his ideas for you all to vote for him or support for Georgia's for, you know, for education? Because that is your, that is what you're doing uh, in your career. Right. Well, you know, Governor Kemp has always supported our program ever since he's found out about us. And, you know, he invited us up to come see him uh, multiple times. And our school has been there um, before. And uh, he's given us major shout outs, you know, sent donors our way and things like that. Because sometimes, you know, he's these guys may not be able to do something specifically for one group or uh, not say I don't say one group, but for one organization in particular or whatever. So they have to do something that best works for everybody. But he has done things as such as sent people to, you know, donate to us and things like that or or has told people about our program which is a lot that i could ask for because people again take care of our program without us giving any government funding and things like that but he actually had a meeting you know for black men with black men and that's why you know um he was able to get uh you know win as by as much as he did this year because he was campaigning a lot in the black community and not just campaigning but he's actually telling the black community like what he's had he's done you know since he's been governor um and instead of just you know, fluff, like usually the other side usually does is just giving fluff about things that they've done. But he actually gave stats and statistics and he answered everybody's questions. That's one thing I do appreciate about him. He does not like shy away from answering people's questions. They'll ask him hard questions, easy questions, and he just answers them. You know, he doesn't, you know, sugarcoat it or anything. And that's how you know somebody's, you know, pretty genuine in what they're doing. And when I saw that, I said, this is amazing. Um, and then your school is here. And I, I saw that you were doing some shout out to Chicago because it was a pastor on the south side mm -hmm. that was living on the hotel on the roof to open up his community center. And you took from that idea and you was on the roof of your school to raise money. Right. Yep. I, I started uh, staying on the roof of our school uh, past summer. I got the I, idea from um, what's uh, Pastor Corey Brooks Corey, in Chicago. Yeah. Yeah, I got the uh, yeah, I got it from Pastor Corey Brooks Project Hood. So he was staying on the roof of Chicago in like negative 20 degree weather, you know, raising money for his uh, for his uh, organization, Project Hood. And so I was like, well, let me use that idea. I went to Chicago and stayed with him and I got the blessing from him to be able to uh, use um, that. A particular way of fundraising and I stay on the roof where it's over 100 degrees you know in Albany in the middle of the summer um so I was sweating bullets you know and things like that but I had people <laughs> sending care packages and donating yes. like four or five hundred thousand dollars uh we were trying to um uh raise a million but we didn't get all the way there but we got pretty close um but that that's kind of where we were um uh, with that and it, it was a beautiful fundraiser and we were able to you know get our school open um, and that's something, you know, I appreciate, again, for all of our supporters, like for us to, again, run a, fr a tuition free boarding school. You cannot get better than that because we feed them, get them haircuts, we clothe them. They live with us, you know, and I got to pay the salaries of the of the staff and things like that for us to be able to run a, a boarding school, you know, for free. It, it just it just means a lot. And and not to mention, you know, um, my previous um I just posted our light bill like from the school earlier on Instagram. It's like six grand, you know, and then that's not on top of our office building and wow. also um, our um, our boarding home. Like we, we have a lot of bills, Wi-Fi, miscellaneous happenings, everything. So um, but that's what we're doing. That's and exactly what we're doing. I admire about you, King. You're a young man. You're a father. Mm -hmm. And you raise the money to open this school. Yeah. What are your thoughts on Dr. Umar for saying that he's going to have a school and it's been over a decade and still the school have not been produced? What are your thoughts on that? No comment. OK, we move on. Mm -hmm. So I'm seeing this when it come with you in this school and educating your boys. It was a story that a mother said, I see the 
change in her in her son behavior. He was mm-hmm. acting out, came to the school, came back home, different behavior. He's doing really well. Mm-hmm. So what is the curriculum in the school that you, you that you teach the children? Like what 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 is like what is the typical day for the uh for the boys that that are part of your school? What is the typical day for them? Uh it's strictly routine. Um and, and I won't say it's any like major difference in curriculum other than we actually write and read. Um, aside from that, um, the curriculum uh, or routines we do every day, they wake up at about six or seven o'clock. Um, they go they go shower. Uh, they get ready for the day. They iron their clothes and things like that because they do have uniforms. Um, but again, um, they do that. They go to class. They go to their classes um, during the day. They usually get around, get out of class, maybe about 12 or so to go, you know, recess or whatever. Or we, you know, let them go play football and things like that. They also exercise in the morning. Um, many of our students who were obese. Um, they've lost a lot of weight. Um, our students have come in looking like little Oompa Loompas to being, you know, skinny <laughs> and, and like looking healthy. And their parents have talked a lot about that also, about them just losing a lot of weight and their behaviors changing. Um, but it's, a lot, it's just a lot of routine and love. You know, somebody's with them all day, you know, watching them and, and helping them, you know, and making sure that they are doing what they're supposed to be doing. Um, and that's that, and that's what I love, you know, about uh, our school. Um, we have a well-rounded program. And then, of course, we do our different workshops, Bible study, uh, things like that. I, I think that's, you know, important. And somebody says skinny isn't a sign of health. Yeah, absolutely. But obesity is not something that we're going to have at our school. They will be, you know, fit because we also feed them what they're supposed wow. to eat. Also, um, one of our staff cooks them three meals a day, um, you know, and they're, we're making sure they're eating healthy food you know, every day, especially as growing babies um, and, and growing boys. I think that's extremely important. Um, and I also have my sons at the school. Uh, my two sons, my oldest son is uh, four years old. Well, he turns four on January 28th and my uh, youngest son, he turns two in May. Um, and, and my babies are, you know, a big part of the school. And a lot of the students are, you know, my babies are looking up to my students. And I'm glad for that because a lot of those kids, you know, um, who developed so much and who've become like my star students, et cetera. My sons are looking up to them. And I love that because they have other boys to be around other kids to socialize with. And I mainly created the school. So my students and my kids didn't have to go to a public school. You know, I have my kids that can go to uh, a school, you know, that, that I made for them. And I think that's, you know, huge for them. I um, mean, my son is already reading. I have them, uh, his, his own teacher. Um, so he's already reading and doing word searches and things like that. Math multiplication, you know, he's already passed a lot of kids that I've been trying to teach how to read. He's already reading fluently and he's about to turn four, you know, and my youngest son, he's already, you know, doing so many things because I have them their own teacher. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's a lot, uh, during the day, um, after they get finished with their daytime routines, uh, they get ready to go to bed. They exercise. You know, I talk to them, we pray, and then they go to bed. That's it. I want to when I see that for the sons, <laughs> you're particularly boys, because you do know a lot of crime in some of these areas, and they need a mentor. Mm-hmm. But you have started bringing boys to your home before the school. Yes, they they were there, and you had them in your house. Absolutely. Um, you know. <laughs> I started again when I was at night when I was 19 years old and I had bought I bought my first house when I was 18. Um so I bought my house and um you know when I started the program and started taking children from the juvenile court system I was realizing that a lot of their issues were their environment. And so for them to not be able to to have any type of rehab was alarming to me um, because we're the only standing rehabilitative program for juvenile offenders in Southwest Georgia. Um, so another, n- no other programs existed before we opened ours for these kids to go to. So they were just effectively going to jail, no rehab and going right back to jail. Um, and that was crazy to me. So I started telling the, the parents, you know, they was like, can you do something with them? I was just like, well, he's just gonna have to come live with me. I went and got my bunk bed, some bunk beds and put them in my living room. And we made it happen. Um, those kids came to live with me. And those kids developed so much like you could literally see a night and day change from the kids who had armed robbery charges and everything. You wouldn't even wow. know they was into that lifestyle um, because they were with me, you know, and I think that was so important for us you know, to see. And as soon as I would send them home or something like they get right back in trouble, you know, and that's how I knew I'm like, nah, these kids need a board. And I'm just like, nah, y'all just come live with me. You know, and I talk to their moms. I'm like, I don't care. I, I can live. They can live with me. I don't mind because they were doing what they're supposed to be doing. They would wash dishes, asking that I need help. They were, you know, doing their schoolwork. You know, I mean, it was beautiful. You know, and these kids is from the streets. 
And those are the kids, you know, that I want most, the kids who really want to to, to change their lives, you know, because they have to want it too. Um, and I think that's uh, extremely important. But these boys, man, um, they change a lot when you change their environments. And once they have to keep going home every day back to that same stuff they're dealing with, yeah, we can have a lot of talks with them. Yeah, we can have somebody mentor them during the day. But if they don't have a way to escape from the reality that's home, they're not going to change. And the school, because I get in question, they said, where's the school located? We're in Albany, Georgia. We're about two and a half hours south of Atlanta. So the school, I, I'm just excited because we definitely need this. And you're not waiting on the government. You said you're doing it for self and you were presenting uh, this idea. Uh, I want to ask you, having all of this stuff that are going on right now, do you believe that more African-American men need to get into education to become teachers, to become principals, to become in charge of boarding school. Do you think we need more of those mentors in that space? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, I, th I mean, that's that's a given. I believe every man should be responsible for at least one child that's not his. If we had that to happen, I mean, we would see astronomical differences you know, in our communities, our men do need to step up in those areas because we have so many boys that need somebody just with them and not even you don't have to live with them or anything but literally they just need somebody to help them show them something because a lot of boys don't know what they don't know so when you can expose them um to you know different um things you know take them across the country i mean we've taken kids you know on their first airplane rides you know around the country and things like that because they've never been anywhere um so a lot of these kids you know they need to see this stuff I and mean, i think that's important um so a men definitely need to get in their communities and, and try and be teachers and things like that because you're talking about surrounding them you know with women all of their life you know what do you expect to happen for them how do you expect them to become a, a you know a man when the only person that can teach a man how to be a man is another man so uh, yeah so a lot of people ask in the chat, they said, is the school accredited? So will they be able to get credit to go to college or to go to high school? Yes. Um. So we what we do is we effectively use a, a online based uh, homeschooling program um, and it is accredited. So that way, when they can you know, go to the next grade, they can go to college, et cetera. Also, all of our students will be uh, mandatory uh college dual enrolled uh, we have a program in georgia called dual enrollment where kids can go to college and high school at the same time that's what i did i graduated high school with my associate's degree um and a lot of the kids can do the same thing and it's free for for, for students um that are in high school so if we put those kids uh into that uh dual enrollment program that is two years of college they don't have to pay for um and that's what we're you know making sure that they all do is is get into the, that early college program um that we'll have set up so yes we use an accredited online program uh, for our students to be able to continue on to their next grades. And that was a piece about that. And I want to get into you being a fan of WWE or just oh, wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> now, it was a rumor. I don't know if you heard about it, that WWE is going to be sold. Yep. Did you hear that rumor? Um, yeah, I did. Um, but I also heard that Triple H and Stephanie, they, you know, it's people opposing the sale, too, because they were trying to, I guess, uh, sell it to the Saudi Arabian government or whatever. Yes, like sir. That. Yeah, so but... I want to ask you because you've been a couple of uh, wrestling events. Who is your favorite wrestler? I, I I can't even. We have to go by decade. I was trying to show you my intercontinental. Oh <laughs> yes, because you, <laughs> you way out. You got the titles. You got the. You had. Uh, you made yeah. me get the. Uh, oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> Bro, I got like I got like 10, 11 championship wow. belts. Man. I wish I was at my office because in my office, you know, all my championship belts are all over my office, and I got like the AEW belt, all the WWE belts, man. Uh, I just collect them all. I'm trying to get a U. They got a UFC belt too. I was trying to get that wow. one. Wow! Yeah, I just I, got. I, I just got this one for Christmas though. <laughs> yeah. I love that. I just love that you uh, definitely into wrestling. What What made you start? Would you did you start in the Attitude Era? Like what era did you start watching wrestling? I started in the Ruthless Aggression Era. Like when I, I still remember when I first started. Literally, I, I'll never forget. I was at my mom's house. Um, we stayed in, in this place called Cremata Beach, um, where I live. And um, I was literally scrolling through TV trying to find something to watch, you know, later in the evening. And all I saw was somebody hit somebody with a chair and I clicked right back and I was like, here we are. And then, <laughs> you know, I was a fan, you know, but I, I knew of wrestling, you know, before, like, because my, my cousins used to play like Smackdown, Shut Your Mouth and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, that's. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Oh, man, that, I love it. But I guess I'll say, you know, like The Rock, Triple H. 
um stone the usual stone cold I, right now my favorite is roman reigns of course roman reigns that's my favorite like, you had you had on his shirt and i said man he can't outdo me so i went to wwe.com and i bought <laughs> i bought the shirt as well when i went to go i went to raw i went yeah. to wrestling and then i also attended uh raw just a huge fan uh i want to ask you and speaking about you being a fan of wwe would you support your son if they wanted to get into wrestling sure absolutely i don't Here's the thing, you know, as, as much as a, a guy always wants to see like a reflection of himself and his kid, I just want to see him be successful, like within whatever he does. And uh, I think uh, that's extremely important um, for our, uh, you know, our boys to have somebody that supports them doing it, whatever they want to do. So, yeah, I'm going to guide him in different areas, of course, you know, but I, whatever sparks his interest in his dream, let's do it, man. Let's 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 get it on. You know, and I want to make sure I'm that supportive father um, for my sons and even the kids in the program, you know, whatever y'all want to do. Let's do it. And I'll guide them in the best direction uh, for that. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I'm excited. A lot of I was talking to someone about you, King, and they was like, he should run for public office. Mm -hmm. Do you ever want to do that? Get into politics to run for office? Uh, not at this moment, man. I'm, I'm strictly, <laughs> strictly, strictly, strictly with uh, my students right now and trying to dig into that. Um, you know, who knows what the future holds in six, seven years. Of course, I say I don't want to right now. Um, but of course, you know, maybe when things kind of settle down or whatever, maybe, maybe not, you know, but I don't have any dreams for it at the moment. And everybody keep asking you about your age. How old are you? I'm 23. 23 years old. And you first started this when you were how old? 19. 19 years old. Mm -hmm. And I'm just excited to see you here. Uh, when you got on Rolling Show, I mean, I was like, I got to follow this guy because you were so intelligent. And I, was 20, I was 21 at that time. Yeah, He was 21. He was just coming at you hard. And that mm -hmm. video got a lot of views. And a lot of people started to support you. I saw you on Sean King. And Sean King posted you um, mm -hmm. as well. Because I think y'all did a collaboration on IG. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just excited. How can people contribute to the school mm -hmm. uh, for those that want to contribute to the school? Uh, you can go to the xforboys.org. That's T H E X F O R B O Y S dot org. Um, and you guys can follow me at New Emerging King on all social media platforms. Or you could go to um, you could go to uh, uh, Instagram, Facebook, Google, whatever, and type in King Randall and I'll pop up. Um, but you, you definitely can follow us at New Emerging King and you can contribute to our program at the xforboys.org. And I'm dropping the link in the chat. Y'all could definitely uh, hit the link and send a donation. I'm going to send a donation after this air. Send a donation. I'm going to send $50. So if y'all want to match that $50 donation, it's about 436 people. Send uh, you know, send what you can. But if you can send 50 and, or match that above, that would be amazing, all right? Because this is what we need in our community. In order to see this succeed, we as especially the community, we need to support this. Yeah. Um, it's it can other people from across uh, the states come to the school to enroll, or is it just based for just Georgia? So um, I do plan to open up other schools like in different areas at a time, and I'm just sharing this live on social media. So if I'm not looking, um, but if I do plan to open up more schools um, across the country, you know, eventually right now, my sole focus is making sure my hometown is working. I will say I do want to make sure that our students in our school is actually working. I know a lot of people have issues with just starting programs and they just open up everywhere and nothing's actually happening. Um, my biggest thing is making sure that the, the school is actually thriving and actually working. And that's what I want, you know, to, to happen in our community. So before I open elsewhere, let's make sure we're thriving and working here then we'll open up in the next in the next city and uh, while we're opening up that school i want to make sure we're best serving those children and those boys in their areas um because what our kids here in albany may need may not be what the kids need in baltimore or may not be what the kids need in houston we might need to redo what we're doing in, the, in those areas and that's what i always say you know we need an ever-evolving curriculum not just one set curriculum that curriculum should be changing just as we're seeing how the students are doing like from six months ago when the school first opened to now we've had to change some things because the students need something you know and these people be trying to you know 
just throw stuff on kids, you know, that they just put together in some office that hadn't even met the children, you know, and don't even give people who actually work with the children an idea, you know, uh, based, you know, curriculum where they could put things into it and make sure the kids are actually thriving. So, again, that's what I want to happen. You know, I want to make sure we're actually thriving. So I don't want to open up 28, 20, 30 schools. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah and, I'm and for it. it doesn't work. So, well, mm -hmm. well thank you so much, King. I, I, you have my support. Like I say, after this broadcast, I'm sending 50. Uh, I definitely, it. I want you all to match that donation. If you could do more than that, do it uh, as well. I'm so happy. I'm like, is he going to come on the show? Because I'm yeah. calling you. You got like a time limit? You got a time limit or nothing like that? I have another guest that's coming on. Did you want to say something else? Oh, no, I was I was just now. I didn't even know you had a comment section. I'm just looking at some of these. Okay, questions. go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> you can, no, you're good, man. I was just trying to. Uh, I was. I didn't know people had questions over here. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, they have. You, if y'all had any questions, are you opening to mentoring men? Uh, you see that comment by K. Yeah, what, what, what exactly is the manosphere? What is what is that? I, I thought you knew. I don't know about. That. <laughs> I don't know what that is. What is that? <laughs> uh, so, uh, any other questions? We can take two more questions if you have it uh, for him as well, because we have another guest that's lined up. How's the uh, being affiliated with Candace Owens? Even if he said he, uh, even if he is, it's a great cause. Yeah. Oh and, yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, for the for the most part, um, Candace is a supporter of ours. Um, I don't have any, you know, ill feelings toward her. Her organization wholly supports what we're doing. They always support our boys. They donate to our boys, and uh, we did workshops with them. Uh, Blexit is pretty active in um, uh, their community. Um, so I, I appreciate her organization and what they do. And I also appreciate her also, even though she may not say things that everybody agrees with, et cetera. You know, it's all about the students and, and the work that we're doing. All right. Okay, thank you. Sorry, I had to let this thing in. All right, thank you, King. Uh, right. I want to bring you back on the show. Sure, yeah. Uh, because um, I'm definitely going to bring you back on the show. Uh, we can definitely chop it up. Uh, I can't wait to see. I mean, I can see this actually going international, like more schools around the United States. Um, but I'm glad that you did it in Georgia. Um, it is needed, and thank you, brother. I appreciate you so much. Thanks so much for having me. And again, everybody, you can follow me at New Emerging King on all social media platforms. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Okay. Right. So uh, we have another guest that is backstage. So I'm going to bring him on. Hold on.